This exhibition is um, a body of work that's called Si Je Meurs If I Die, um, and it is an accompaniment to my mother's last year of her life and then the aftermath, basically. And then there's also a video that's called Scheherazade, or Performing the Archive, which I made at the same time. Um, and so some of the photographs have a relationship to images that you'll see in the video. Um, and I don't know if you, how many of you have seen the video, maybe not too many. Okay, um, but a few of you have. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about just the body of work and how it kind of interweaves with the video and then the different aspects of it. Um, so thank you for being here. I know it's a cold, chilly night, <laughs> and, um, but it's, it's great to have you all here. So um, it's, I guess I realized as I was driving down here that I haven't really talked a lot about this body of work, and mostly because it's very emotional to me. You know, even though it's 10 years since my mother died, this is actually November was the 10 year anniversary. So it's, um, it's kind of this work that is a little bit maybe intriguing in some ways in terms of the images because the images both allude to things but they also don't give a lot of information. Um, and anyway, they're like snippets from, you know, her, her body, you know, like her hair. Um, and it's made between El Salvador, which is where I'm from, and Washington DC as well. Like you see the second image is made from a, while I was speaking with her on Skype. So, you know, so it's kind of thinking about my family history a lot, my history uh, about how I've constructed my sense of identity, which I have tried to do through many bodies of work. Um, and also kind of thinking about legacy and letting go and loss and um, memory. So to give you a little background, my family is a family of immigrants to El Salvador. Um, my father's family is Palestinian Christian and they went to El Salvador at the beginning of World War I. And my mom's family is from Eastern Europe, Poland, and then France, which is where she was born. And they're Jewish and they're Holocaust survivors. And so my mom's family hid during World War II in the central region of France in the Auvergne. And then she went to El Salvador, which is where she met my father and where I was born and raised. So my sense of identity is very hybrid and um, that is much more addressed in the video than in the other photographs, in the photographs, although you'll see some hints of it, you know, like you'll see, you know, the, the pyramids of Giza, uh, or you'll see, you know, uh, a reference to being Jewish in one of the photographs over there. So, but family has always been a really central part of my work and how it is that I try to speak about what it means to be all those things and then coming to the US and then all of a sudden discovering that people call me Latina. And, you know, in El Salvador, I was not that. I was, you know, I was an other. I was part of communities that were more, you know, on the margins. And so it's kind of an interesting thing to think about how is it that one can live with all those identities within, right? And so my work has been an attempt at um, building that and constructing that sense of, of who I am. And then my mother also owned an art gallery in El Salvador during the Civil War years, which were 1980 to 1992. Um, the gallery started in 1977, right before the, the war broke out. And then um, the gallery continued until 2001. So her persona was a very, you know, she had a public persona and she also had an art collection. And so part of this is like an, this is the intimate, more intimate narrative of her, 
her story, basically. So um, I think that first I wanted to talk about these pictures that are on this side because they, they hint at like this intergenerational dialogue that I've been trying to build with my work. Um, and so this, this, um, these photographs, especially the two on the sides, um, are, are a reference to basically the first portrait I ever made of my family. So I, in 1986, I was visiting my grandmother in Paris, which is where she was living. And I made a portrait of her sitting, like you see, you know, you see that hint of her here, um, holding a portrait of her with her two children at the end of World War II after the liberation of France. And so, you know, this is after they had been hiding for a while. So um, they, this picture, then I re reconfigured it and rethought it through because as I was packing my mother's things in her house in El Salvador, I found pieces of fabric of my grandmother's dress. Uh, my grandmother was a seamstress, and so, you know, it, it was amazing that my mother had kept these pieces of fabric that were part of the same dress that I had photographed her in, in 1986. So, I started to think about, I mean, this is kind of an intuitive thing, but I started to think about um, how these remnants, literally remnants of things, are, um, are kind of part of the archive. You know, I have, I have used archives, family archives, throughout my whole career as an artist, um, starting from the family album to then other archives that I've used that are either personal or like part of the family or an extension of the family or even uh, public archives. So I started to see my mother's house and the objects in the house as part of this archive. And you know, this was kind of a hint um, among, you know, along the way. Um, and, and then, so I first made this picture, and, which is most of the photographs here were, I started photographing in 2011, and then I completed the series in 2016. But then I made this one in 2020, and it just seemed like, I don't know, like it was as if, I don't know, maybe the veil of grief was like lifting or something, you know, like there was like this, this marking that I had to do by photo making that photograph. So, um, and then this, this is um, the wall of her house. Her house is an adobe house in El Salvador and she had these windows um, that were different colors. Well, she has, the, the, I mean, the house is still there. And um, the light as it comes through, it just creates these rectangles of light that are colored light uh, on the wall. And so, you know, it's also an allusion to her love of Rothko um, and the modernist, um, the Brazilian modernist, Yanelli, Arcangelo Yanelli. So it's, it's like my conversation with, you know, these things that have influenced me as well as, as her, you know, like what she loved in the house. Um, so, like I said before, you know, this is kind of like a portrait because it shows her hair. Um, and, you know, I kind of reflect on the fact that now, you know, her hair is white, but, you know, at some point these curls were dipped in chamomile so that they could stay blonde. Um, and that was not just a vanity thing, but also a survival thing, because during the war in World War II, they were hiding and they wanted her to look, they wanted my mother to look blonde, you know, so that the Nazis wouldn't get her. So it's sort of like these kind of inside, you know, conversations that I'm having with myself about these moments that mark my own history. Um, and um, that is from a, uh, 
sculpture that she commissioned an artist who worked with her in the gallery to make of her. And the, as you see, it's partly blue, but it's not all blue. It's because of those windows that have light that reflects on them. And so it just changes the piece, right? Because it's not really a blue sculpture. Uh, but you can see the, the little part of her hair, you know, on the top. Um, and I like that dialogue with this picture um, because it just makes it, you know, it's like a before after, like time passing by kind of thing. Here I'm revealing a little bit like the windows that are paint, taint, you know, tinted. So this is like an orange and a green uh, window in her house. Um, and then there's like a little bit of a different kind of window which alludes to both a different land, which is the Middle East, which is where my father's family comes from, as I said before, but also the whole idea of photography, because my dad was an amateur photographer, and so this is um, from a re-photographed slide uh, that he had made when they visited Egypt in the 1970s. And um, I, I have that um, measuring tape, you know, on top, sort of as a, I don't know, this allusion to, to like measuring time, measuring land, measuring, you know, space, whatever, however it is that you'd like to think about it. But it's things that I found in my mom's house. These are all things of, you know, that are like part of this little puzzle that I'm putting together. Um, what else can I say? This one. <laughs> this one is perhaps like the most like kind of mysterious and intriguing one in the sense that at the same time that it's like very intimate, but also it speaks to her gallery. So this photograph is made in her house, but it is of an, um, of a armoire that was part of an installation by the artist Moises Barrios, who is a Guatemalan artist, uh, when they did an exhibition at the gallery in 1992 that was commemorating the encounter of Spain and the Americas. And um, it was called the Altar of Memory. But by this time, this particular armoire that was part of his installation was an armoire in her house, right? And so um, there were these two, you know, big things inside, which is very like elusive to really the history of you know colonization in El South, in the Central America and the Americas, but also you know the civil wars that were going on during the time which this piece by Moises Barrios in the background, which is you know, in, in the inside of the armoire, um, really is commemorating. But those two, I can tell you that they are sculptures. It's basically that sculpture wrapped inside and in another one. So, you know, like I'm giving it away, but basically when you see the photograph, it's just pretty spooky, right? So it's, it's like this allusion to death and allusion to, to memory as well because of the portraits that are around inside the, the, the armoire. Um, and then, you know, there's like this, this super eight millimeter film that is super, basically, bless you, all of the, my, childhood memories are like in there, right? It's like my, the documentation of my childhood is right there in that photograph, which I then use in the video as well. So you will see in the video that there's some Super 8 film of when I was younger, when I was really small, or uh, when I was a teenager. Um, and then, um, which is part of my archive, you know, it's part of how I'm building this story of, of how, how we come together um, and how I become who I am now. Um, let's see, 
photographs, of course, are part of the archive. That's from two four by five pictures that I found that my father made of my mother's eye and my eye. And so I put them together and, you know, side by side and rephotographed them. And that's that picture. And I love how that, you know, speaks to this kind of dual, you know, gaze of like my mom and me at the same time and there's this intergenerational link and then it's also a portrait. It's like a family portrait because you can actually see my dad reflected on my eye on the right side. Um, so this is kind of an extended portrait, you know, it's just like an intergenerational portrait of a family. Um, you see my mom's portrait of when she was really young and she went to El Salvador in the late 50s and I'm holding it you know in front of a light so you'll you're seeing the light coming through the picture and then um, another portrait is this one which is um, the a picture that I made by projecting a portrait that my dad made of us when I was like four, sitting on the bench that is there now. Um, so it's kind of like thinking about the layers of time and how it is that, you know, it all kind of changes. And, um, but it's like a new portrait now, you know, it's a different moment, even though they're not there, but the portrait is there. Um, this you will see in the video. This is from in the 90s, the late 90s. My mother had a very bad car accident. And um, I went to El Salvador to take care of her. And when I was doing that, and after she left the hospital, she somehow pulled out this, you know, little, um, how would you, I can't, the band, the, what do you call it? Sorry? Brooch. Yeah, well, it's like the, the fabric that Jews had to wear to denote that they were Jews. And um, I made a picture of her holding it, various pictures of her holding it. And in 1998, I made a body of work that dealt with her hiding during World War II in France. And this was a picture that I could never include. I mean, that particular, you know, photograph of her holding the Juif, you know, uh, patch. Um, and after she died, I put the negative in the enlarger and I projected it onto her, one of her shirts, which is that picture. And it's still kind of obscured because I still can't quite, you know, like show that picture because it, it felt like it was crossing a line that um, would hurt her. And at the same time, it was something that had to be told. So it was like this, you know, it's always like a conflictive thing. And you see it in the video where she says, she, I, I narrate that she's telling me, um, wait till I die, you know, don't say anything about this, wait till I die, which is basically the history of people who have suffered trauma in their lives, and it's really difficult for them to, you know, actually talk about it and communicate it to the next generation, which is what happened to me. Basically, I had to unravel that whole story because my mother never talked about all of that. And, um, but it was always a conflictive kind of situation where partly I couldn't, you know, I, I had to do it for my own sanity, but it was something that was difficult for her. So anyway, so I talk about that in the video, which the video is, is called Scheherazade or Performing the Archive. And it's a four part, uh, four chapter video um, based on the Rinsky Korsakov Scheherazade. I don't know if you know this suite. Can you hear it right there? 
Um, and it's the four chapters. It's like first my dad, then my mother, then my son and me, and then me. So it's like this whole, this kind of like nutshell of my tiny stories. You know, the Palestinian, my dad, it talks about the gaze as well, the male gaze within, you know, photography as well, and him being a photographer photographing me. It talks about my mom and me and that relationship with, with like telling her story or not, like who, who owns that story, right? And then my son and me and like how does he see himself, which is like totally unsettling as well. And then me saying, I'm making, I'm making the pictures, I'm making the story, and it's sort of like this, you know, coming out of it as, as a, an empowering thing as well. So, um, and, and that is a self-portrait which basically says I'm at the center of the labyrinth. My mother's gallery was called El Laberinto, or the, ga the labyrinth, and her house is kind of like a labyrinth. It's designed that way. She designed it, and it's sort of like a labyrinth. Um, so that's kind of in a nutshell, and I would much rather have you guys ask me questions. And if you want to watch the video for a little bit and then ask me questions, that's fine too. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's in a nutshell what this whole body of work and this video is about.